the public comment period is now open for the short-term insurance rule. Now, this is the rule that was proposed by the Trump administration in late February. It makes a major change to the type of short-term health plans that insurance companies are able to sell. Now, if you plan to comment, the, you'll have to do it before the end of April. April 23rd is the deadline. And before we're done today, we're going to show you where you could submit those comments. But first, let's review the way the law is now and then what the proposed rule would do to change that law. The rule right now says that insurers are allowed to sell temporary health plans that do not have to comply with the Affordable Care Act or any of its consumer protection rules, but only if they are in, in effect for less than three months. A short-term insurance plan means a three-month or less insurance plan. This was designed to coordinate nicely with the Affordable Care Act. The, you might recall that under the Affordable Care Act, if you go without health insurance for longer than three months, you could be subject to a penalty come tax time. Your grace period for not having insurance is about three months. So these short-term insurance plans were meant to keep folks, uh, have something available in those three months should they need some sort of care, knowing that it's not a full benefit plan. It excludes coverage for certain types of benefits. It can charge higher premiums based on whether or not you have pre-existing conditions or other health factors. It does not have to cover pharmaceuticals or other prescriptions, and some of them may not even um, cover more emergency or chronic conditions. They really can be quite limited in what they offer, but it was seen as something, and for some people where they had up to three months of not having Affordable Care Act or other qualifying coverage, it was allowed to be an option. Now again, this is limited to three months or less in duration. Now again, why three months? Because it could fill that gap. Now let's talk about what the proposed rule does. It extends the allowable time period for short-term insurance to a year. This is a dramatic increase in the definition of short-term. It opens the door for short-term plans to become a viable alternative to minimum essential health coverage. It's also being touted by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Consider their recent conversation with the state of Idaho. Idaho wanted to sell completely non-compliant plans in their marketplace. CMS said, no, you can't break the law that flagrantly. You have to sell compliant health plans, but have you considered some short-term insurance plans as an alternative to the Affordable Care Act? So we know this is something that the administration is pushing. It was at the request of a lot of GOP senators as well to make sure that they could sidestep all of these expensive requirements of the Affordable Care Act. So it would offer some cheaper health insurance. So if some people are saying, hey, you could have this as an attractive alternative, lower monthly premiums, and some you might attract more people to have this type of coverage. But you can see the risk in that. And the risk is personal liability. Skimpier benefit requirements uh, not covering the care that people need when they need it. You can, like we said, exclude prescription or rehabilitative care. Uh, and we have seen from past experience before the Affordable Care Act was law that these plans weren't paying out the coverage when people needed it. They only covered about 50% of the average person's medical costs. That's not covering a lot of the need when people experience it. Now, the impact overall, it's expected that if short-term insurance plans are expanded for a year in duration, you could see people leaving the marketplace and that pool, that individual responsibility payment would potentially be a factor. People would leave the marketplace, go into a short-term plan, not have the care when they need it, but say, think that it's a cheaper alternative. The people that would leave the marketplace most likely because buying qualifying health insurance might be seen as too expensive, younger and healthier patients. More people with high care needs would find themselves then struggling with medical costs or paying a lot more for care in a qualified health plan inside of the Affordable Care Act. We can see more impact. Premium rates could then go up. If you have the healthy people leaving the marketplace, then the plans available inside the Affordable Care Act marketplace will be more expensive. There's actually a new report that predicts that there will be about a 12 to 23% premium increase in 2019 alone from a combination of the GOP tax bill, getting rid of the individual responsibility payment, and short-term health plans, and the association health plans, part of the same uh, rule that is being flo um, floated in front right now for public comment. 
The report also says triple that premium increase by the year 2021. The states that are at highest risk for the largest increase in premiums are some of the states that have not expanded Medicaid, and Wisconsin, where we are, is on that list. There's even a prediction that over the next three years, Wisconsin could see a 90% premium increase by the infiltration of plans that are short-term or association health plans. This is why it's important that you look, read, in, read up on it, look into it, and share your comments. Like we said, the comment period runs through April 23rd. They can be submitted online at regulations.gov. You can also write it in a paper letter and mail it to CMS. Totally appropriate way to submit comments. You can read more on the proposed rule and read those instructions yourself on how to submit comments. You can do that at regulations.gov. You can also read the Federal Register and they do bullet point it out of how to make a comment and where to send it. You can also read that report that we mentioned on the projected premium increase should short-term insurance and association health plans become the law. You can share your story with us as well and you can visit healthwatchwisconsin.org to find us. Thanks.